Hi, my name is David Nardo. I am a senior at Emory University, enrolled in Botanical Medicine and Health with Dr. Cassandra Quave. For my semester project, I chose to research Ministry of Siscapi, a pandemic to South America which is crucial to many of the religious practices of the natives of the Amazon River Basin, who call the plant by several names including Ayahuasca, Huasca, Capi, Yahe, and several others. The name that I want to focus on is Ayahuasca because it pertains to the main method of consumption of the plant. The word ayahuasca means vine of the spirits, and it often refers to a hallucinogenic brew that is concocted using the stems of the plant, along with several other plants which I'll discuss later. The ayahuasca brew is able to produce hallucina hallucinations in those who take it, and is said to confer a higher state of mind. Like I said, the plant is consumed throughout the Amazon River, ba the Amazon River Basin and grows throughout the forests of South America. While the origins of the use of the plant are unknown, archaeologists are certain that it predates the colonization of America. From here on out, I'm going to refer to Bonisteriopsis capi as ayahuasca for simplicity, although keep in mind that the term ayahuasca can also refer to the beverage. Ayahuasca is a vine that can grow naturally in the moist climates of South America. Its, its stems can grow to a few inches in diameter when fully developed and have the appearance can have the appearances of thin tree branches or, or small trees. There are two types of stems, one smooth and one knotty. So this is the knotty one and this is a smooth one. Along the smaller stems of the plant there usually you can usually find the leaves which are long and oblong and you can also find the small pink and white inflorescences which give rise to the fruit. The plant is pollinated by bees and other insects and the seeds can can actually travel in the wind because they have um, a helicopter like shape. The Native Americans that consume it actually make the, the brew that I've been mentioning and the way they do this is that they take the stems of the plant, they take other plants and they'll put them in a big cauldron and just boil it for hours. The beverage is given to patients suffering from explicable ailments and what it's supposed to do is that the patient who takes the plant is able to leave their spirit guided by a shaman which is meant to guide them as they they go out of their body and they search for the cause of their ailment. Another use is um, that the shamans will actually take the plant or will take the brew themselves and they'll they'll search by communicating the way they discover is that they'll communicate with the spirits of the forest and the spirits of the dead and they'll they'll get knowledge from these spirits and they'll use that to treat people and and of course there are many especially from from western cultures that are skeptical to this but it is it's proven time and time again to have some sort of basis in that it can actually heal people and what whatever knowledge the shamans gain and the and the patients gain from taking the plant can actually show healing effects. So what is it actually makes Benisteriopsis capiac the way it does? Is um several chemicals in it called H carbolines or beta carbolines, depending on, on where you get the, the information from. Um these these H carbolines or beta carbolines are not actually able to cause hallucinations. What they are are MAOIs or um, monoamine oxidase inhibitors which are found throughout the plant in several concentrations. What actually makes what actually causes the hallucinations in the ayahuasca drink is NN dimethyltryptamine or DMT which is a well-known hallucinogenic substance found in many countries including the US. Um, and the DMT and the brew actually comes from plants like Cycotria viridis and Diploptris um, cabrerana, which are the which are the other plants that I mentioned that are used to make the brew. DMT is broken down by the stomach, so if you take it orally, they actually have no function and they don't really produce hallucinogenic effects because they're broken down by again these monoamine um, oxidases. And monoamine oxidases, they oxidize these molecules by removing the nitrogen molecule or the nitrogen atom 
and releasing it as ammonia or urea. So what the um, MAOIs from 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 CAPI and from from the ayahuasca plant do is that they inhibit the effect of this molecule monoamine oxidase so that DMT is actually not broken down and it can be absorbed by the body and thus it causes the hallucinations. Um, another use of, of a potential use for ayahuasca would be in treating depression. Depression is believed to be caused by um, serotonin deficiency and serotonin is um, again a, a, a it's a molecule containing a single nitrogen. During during depression, what can happen is that the brain will produce serotonin, but it's broken down by monoamines as as an as a as a normal thing of metabolism. It's just the way the body deals with serotonin. By by giving patients MAOIs, you actually prevent the breakdown of um serotonin and actually improve the patient's moods and it's actually it's actually a well documented um, fact that many of the people who take ayahuasca will afterwards feel their moods elevated and this is of course due to the MAOIs in the plant um, so contraindications for, for ayahuasca include the obvious vomiting, supposedly about half an hour to an hour after you take the, the brew, you'll actually get this um, nausea and vomiting that will last for about an hour or two. Um, and there are several research studies that have shown that feeding ayahuasca to to rats can actually reduce their fertility. Um, there's also other studies that show that ayahuasca can produce metabolic issues because of because it alters um, the levels of epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are also monoamines. So this can lead to um, elevated heart rate, um, problems breathing, and that type of thing. Um, the use of ayahuasca was restricted up until the 50s to the indigenous cultures of the Amazon. But at some point in the 50s, the rise and spread of several religious groups, namely from Brazil, helped carry that knowledge or the knowledge of ayahuasca into mainstream um, Amero European cultures. Among these groups, among these religious groups that helped carry out ayahuasca into the I guess modern world is Santo Daime and I wanted to talk a little bit um, about Santo Daime because I think they kind of exemplify um, or or their use of ayahuasca kind of exemplifies how the world views ayahuasca today. Um, Santo Daime is a syncretic um, spiritual practice founded in the 1930s in Brazil. It incorporates several religious and spiritual traditions including folk Catholicism African animism and South American shamanism. Their ceremonies use ayahuasca and rituals and include ritual singing just like the Native Americans do. However, um, the purpose of their rituals or the purpose of their use of ayahuasca is not to heal but to achieve a greater state of consciousness. Um, Another another factor that has um, helped carry out ayahuasca into into society and that has promoted its use are the artistic images from many many artists, um, and these images can can range from simplistic geometric patterns to very complex um, and even beautiful images such as this one down here. Although some of them are a little bit more symbolistic, and unfortunately, as ayahuasca has spread into the world, many many governments have become restrictive of the plant of the plants that make that are used to make the brew. In Brazil, the, the, during the eighties and nineties, um, the legality of these plants or the legal status of these plants um, 
was a very it was a very heated issue. Uh, however, it was decided that so long as the plants are used um, for religious purposes, they they would be considered legal. In the United States, the the current status is similar. A special case is the Netherlands, which has no restrictions on the sales of the plants and. You can actually buy the products on several stores that specialize on that type of product. And on the other hand, you have France, which is completely restrictive of all the plants in the brew. They don't allow either sales or consumptions, regardless of whether it's for religious purposes or otherwise. Um, so to conclude... Ayahuasca is a beverage, or the, the, the ayahuasca beverage is proof of the great knowledge of the natives that have acquired a lot of a lot of information on the plants surrounding them over the years, as they as they have been experimenting with these plants and they've been using them for their for their healing practices. Um, I believe personally that given enough research, it is likely that the plants used in ayahuasca or including copy of course um, would or could prove useful in treating many ailments especially psychological ailments um, and it can be it can be very um, useful in determining in understanding the methods of healings that have been less that, that have been left unexplored by modern medicine unfortunately because the plan is being used for recreational purposes by many people and because of the negative light that um, religious practices like Santo Dai may have, um, especially in in conservative religious cultures like a lot of America and a lot of Europe, um, the the plan has achieved or it's 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 viewed or it's it's viewed negatively by mainstream culture and. It's slowly beginning to to receive or to be banned from public access, and it's very likely that just as it's just as it's happened with marijuana, the plan will be limited for research even.